language. It's a force of communication that has advanced our species forward, past our primitive stage. Throughout history, humans have created extraordinary works of literature, from paintings on cave walls to complex stories and novels. The way in which we communicate is elaborate and efficient. It should be no surprise that, throughout the centuries, there have been forbidden, dark, and sometimes even cursed scriptures written on the parchments of ancient manuscripts. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three ancient books that have caused mystery and interest. The Greek Magical Papyri The Greek Magical Papyri, or PGM, is a body of papyri dating back to the Greco-Roman Egypt. It's written mostly in ancient Greek, however other languages are included in the text, such as Egyptian Demotic. Physical analysis of the pages has shown that the materials used to create it can be dated back between 100 BCE to the 400 CE. The contents of the scripture contain ancient hymns, instructions for complex rituals, formulae, and many mysterious spells. The PGM wasn't created in its entirety, instead was slowly added to over the passage of time. This has sparked argumentative debates over the nature of the manuscript production throughout the years. H. D. Betts, an English translator of the PGM, has suggested that the magical aspects of this manuscript were authentically written in the ancient Greco-Roman times, and that the book itself is forbidden knowledge, underground literature, so to speak hidden from plain sight to protect it from the mass book burnings of the time. Evidence of book burnings occurring at this period in history do exist, such as when Emperor Augustus ordered for all magical books to be burned and destroyed, though it's speculated that these books were specifically early Christian texts. Scholar Frankfurter argued that these texts were written by innovative members of the Egyptian priesthood during the 3rd or 4th century decline of the Egyptian temple infrastructure, therefore were not forbidden texts. The PGM was discovered once again sometime in the 18th century. This was during an antiquities trade, and from that point onwards news and rumours of this elusive text spread through contemporary scholarly circles. It was only during the early 19th century that the very first volume was sold at an art market in Egypt. The next known volume of the text was bought by a French diplomat. A large section of the PGM are commonly known as the Anastasi Collection. This is due to the fact that at least half a dozen of the texts were owned by Jean de Anastasi. He explained that he got them in Egypt. He sold the texts to European collectors of his time, the volume spreading out across the world, all the way to the British Museum and to other various public and private collectors alike. H. D. Betts, the English translator, explained the text were likely in the possession of some ancient scholar who resided in Egypt, and Anastasi came across them as well as other antiquities of significance and took them, to sell them for profit. What's known as the Thebes cache held within it, besides the PGM, the Stockholm Papyrus and the Leyden Papyrus X, which contained alchemical scriptures. Though the introductory segment, a Greco-Roman Egyptian in nature, there are other sections which suggest they were produced solely in Greece. Hellenic deities such as Zeus, Artemis, Aphrodite and Apollo aren't depicted as divine beings to be worshipped, but instead as dangerous demonic entities. The text tangles Hellenic, Jewish and Egyptian beliefs together, though the origins for this are far from clear. Though the text materials and language of origin is Greco-Roman, the actual religious content seemed to be more Greco-Egyptian. After reviewing and analysing the PGM, Pauline Hainsworth, a professor at the SRUC, decided that the manuscript held practical uses as well as intellectual ones. Once put together in a cohesive order, the PGM seems to be a guide for magicians, wise women and magic users. Spells, arcane knowledge, secrets of the ancient gods, formulae, and even what appears to be a guide for magicians on the go are all included within the sacred pages. The rituals included are both light and dark, from summoning demons and deities to simple folk remedies. 
the PGM had it all. It's uncertain who started this series of mystical writings, or who contributed to it over time. What is known is this book had a considerable number of unnamed authors who possessed hidden knowledge they wished to share. The texts were passed down from generation to generation, concealed from the gaze of common people who were not meant to lay their eyes upon it. The Ars Almadel The Ars Almadel is part of what is known as the Lesser Key of Solomon, or the Solomonus Regis. This is a grimoire dedicated to the art of demonology, whose authors are lost to the sand of time, anonymous or forgotten. The spellbook was produced in the mid-17th century, however, the information and material inside the pages can be traced back to several centuries prior. This mysterious spellbook is split into five separate sections, the Ars Almadel being one. The grimoire has been copied and edited by several notable individuals throughout the decades. One of the sections, the Ars Goetia, may have been written first. It features content about advanced demonology, much of which can be traced back to the 16th and 17th century. A man named Thomas Rudd wrote about various types of demons, as well as about 72 angels in the 1500s. His works were likely used when the novel was composed though the names and seals of individual angels were likely the work of someone else, whose works were referenced by Samuel Mathers in his own text about the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. Samuel Mathers went on to partly translate the spellbook in the 19th century. In 1904, Alistair Crowley published the Ars Goetia and included edited invocations, which were unrelated to the original scripture, inserting his own information some of which is now considered to have been fabricated with no concrete evidence and is scrutinised in modern occult communities. The Ars Almadel, however, has its authors and inspirations unknown. It is considered to be of Arabic origin. It's speculated that a man by the name of Robert H. Turner possessed a copy in the 15th century. In the early 20th century, several translated versions in Hebrew were discovered but who specifically wrote it remains a mystery. The Ars Almadel is an instruction manual of sorts. It describes the process of the creation of waxen tablets with various designs meant to invoke angels with divination. Furthermore, the Almadel is a portable altar meant to summon divine and demonic beings. If instructions are followed properly, and one creates a ritualistic space which is exercised and fumigated for a week, all spirits who are summoned are said to obey the summoner. The Gaudrabok The Gaudrabok, literally meaning the Book of Magic in Icelandic, is a grimoire that's been dated back to the year 1600. The book is considerably small compared to other spellbooks of the time, and contains a compilation of 47 spells, sigils and staves. It has four known creators from the 16th to 17th century. The first three scribes were of Icelandic descent, but the fourth was a Dane. The spells and writings inserted are mainly written in Latic and Runic alphabets, including Icelandic magical staves. Included in the book are invocations to entities of the Christian faith, demons, and pagan deities. There are even herbal recipes and spells of all varieties from protective charms against evil, to spells meant to induce rage, to spells that are supposed to enchant women. It was officially published within the last century, in 1921. The publisher translated it to Swedish during the 1920s, but the first English translation was only released in 1989 by Stephen Flowers. It's believed the first magician began the work and wrote down anywhere from 1 to 10 spells. Afterwards, it was passed down to another Icelander, who added more spells, and so on, until the third writer chose to include an index of references to old Germanic deities in immaculate detail. Then, the book was shipped to Denmark, where a Danish magician added his share of the spells. The Gaudrabok is often overlooked, but it's a crucial part of history. Unlike most sources, the Icelandic spellbook reveals more to us about the belief in and view of magic during the late Middle Ages than the majority of references from this time, and it does so very clearly. 
It's no secret that our ancestors believe wholeheartedly in magic. It's a concept that existed since the beginning of time. Whether or not magic is real is a debate. Though a plethora of spellbooks and grimoires are out there in the wide world just waiting to be discovered. Who knows how many more mysterious books we'll find in the future, and more importantly, who knows what light they'll shed on our past. It's perfectly plausible that we may someday uncover something unthinkable, something that will alter the way we view history itself. So what do you make of these mysterious ancient books? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and help us by growing this community, whilst working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.